My friends, it has been a long time, but today I am wearing shorts, and that can only mean one thing. I've made it to Florida. They call it the Sunshine State. The van is looking good right now. <laughs> it's a bit of a mess. Who cares? No big deal. Oh, I gotta clean this up. The internal temperature of the van reached 93 degrees today. I believe it's going to be a long, hot summer inside my dark metal box. Look at this I just got in the mail. <laughs> a little 3D printed Nugabago logo. Uh, maybe I'll put it here, maybe I'll put it on the outside of it. Ivan Farinak on Instagram, he cooked up this actual design for me. I'm so happy with it. And Steve, the guy from uh, Spokesman MTB, he actually got the 3D printing going and sent it out to me here in Florida. I was able to grab it and uh, I'm happy. This is cool. I've been in Florida for a few days now and I got a couple rides in already and I've been having a blast. My quality of sleep over the past few days has been absolutely fantastic. No tossing and turning, no being uncomfortable, no waking up in the middle of the night, but my quantity has been bad. I've been hanging out with Alexander, the single track sampler, and I'm staying up late and I'm getting up early and that's the way it's gotta be. Just like everyone else, I've gotta balance work and play and the balance has not been there right now. I've gotta get some more sleep and the whoop strap has been sending uh, push notifications to my phone recently, knowing that I'm not doing good, that I need to get in bed. So I'm gonna listen to this thing. If you wanna get serious about your fitness, see where your training's at, see where your holes are, see where you're lacking, go to whoop.com, enter the code BKXC and get 15% off your subscription. So I've already done two really cool rides in Florida so far. The first was a street ride with the sampler and Nick and Joe, Mr. Tonka. Super fun going through the streets of Tampa, finding all kinds of goofy stuff to do. Get up off your feet. I got something to eat. I got places to be. Are you feeling the beat? I can't blame you. I'm just saying. I don't know how we got your end of this spot. I was talking a lot. Am I living or not? I can't tell. Am I just living? Get up off your feet. I got something to do. I got a place to be. What you feeling to be? I can't blame you. I'm just saying. I don't know what we got. You're in this spot. I was talking a lot. Am I living or not? I can't tell. Am I just living? Get up off your feet. I got something to do. I got a place to be. What you feeling to be? I can't blame you. I'm just The second awesome ride was a Patreon meetup at Santos. That place is the best. It has so many cool little features to practice on, stuff that I've never seen anywhere in California. Little jumps, big jumps, drops and skinnies, all kinds of cool stuff that was just a great place to hang out with a bunch of people and ride and have fun. And it's always really, really cool to meet you guys from Patreon and have a blast. Ah, Santos is super, super cool. I've also put a new water bottle into service. My old one had way too much gunk and crap constantly growing in the valve. So I'm going with Florida's highest bike shop at 222 feet, higher ground. Thank you, Sean. I've got a handful of places I need to get to while I'm down here. Hopefully find some cool stories and of course, hopefully find some badass trails. It is a fantastic, bright, sunny day in Florida. A little bit windy. I'm out here at Dyer Park, which has some mountain bike trails. It has a model airplane airfield, airport. It's got like a drone area. It's got a kayak area. Some, I saw some people fishing. I saw some random people parked under palm trees, just hanging out. It is recreation supreme here in the sunny, sunny days. This place is an old landfill about 40 years ago it was active or maybe 50 years ago it was active trash heap they call this place mount trashmore as well and uh so they have to let it sit for about 20 years before they open it up for recreation for it to kind of cook <laughs> as the guys were saying so today i'm riding with john a retired judge and peter a retired lawyer who were the guys who got this place going for mountain biking 23 years ago these guys got these trails built out here for mountain biking and they're still fighting to this day to try to get more features built and more things out here so we can have a good fun mountain bike experience we parked up on the hill next to the model airplane airport because guys keep getting their stuff broken into when they park down lower. 
from the old scumbags. <laughs> Man, I got this really nice pair of sunglasses from Costco there you go. and I lost them ah! like two days ago. And I knew once I got them, they were like 30 bucks. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, I should have bought two. So then I go to a different Costco yesterday. Couldn't find them. They didn't, they didn't have them anymore. Oh. It's like the total Costco thing. Once it's there, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. You got to buy three of them. <laughs> Looking for a lip to pop off of anywhere I can find it. Wow, this is... Uh, Jungleless. Oh man, you got to be active here. This is things are coming at me. Oh, butterflies. So all these trees must be only 20, 30 years old. Yeah, yeah, and very shallow roots. Very shallow you roots. Can't get down past that yeah, because there's a layer of dirt and then there's like a layer of fabric or blocker or whatever to cover up all the trash. So these guys were telling me when they laid out this this single track here back in the day, they had signposts and hey, go from post to post, number one to number two to number three. And <laughs> the guys who, who built it just <laughs> didn't know what they were doing at all. And they just took an eight foot wide bulldozer and just went and they said oh i see a i see a sign oh let's go to that one let's go to that one so they didn't end up getting exactly what they wanted but luckily over the years the eight foot wide path has actually gone down to a single track if we start recycling everything and putting everything into compost how's yeah. florida gonna have any mountains This is dangerous. <laughs> I know this is loose. <laughs> Watch out for the side knobs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Any bodies buried out here? <laughs> Man, <laughs> I'm gonna meet some wild animal. <laughs> oh, big old spider web. What kind of spider is making that? Oh, no. <laughs> Get it off me. <sighs> So John here was a roadie for a long time until he got taken out by a drunk driver. Was that 1995? Yeah, 95 when my accident was, I'm like, I'm almost at my 25th anniversary of not being dead. <laughs> Pete and John were friends back then and Pete was coming home and saw the traffic and he saw the life flight helicopter and he was like, oh man, I hope that's not John. <laughs> and it was. I never thought I'd become an old guy out here riding. <laughs> that happened. Yeah. You turn 70, a lot of people think you should just be sitting around. Yeah. <laughs> Those little bumps are sweet. They said there are gators out here, but they, <laughs> the parks people try to shoo them away, <laughs> get them out of here. But uh, Peter said, where there's water, there's gators. You can't stop them. Peter was telling me that he found mountain biking back in 1992, because a guy at his work came in, had a mountain bike and needed it to be worked on. Like he didn't know how to fix it himself. And Peter's pretty handy, so he kind of wrenched on it a little bit. Even though he'd never seen a mountain bike before, didn't know what mountain biking was. And then he was like, man, he was an old motocross guy, so he got into it. And there used to be a secret spot called Kmart that everybody would go ride at that was behind the Kmart back in the day. But eventually that got, you know, turned into housing and stuff. So they found a couple other little spots to ride. And then they got this thing up and running. Pretty cool. Watch your head on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> ah, you passed her. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Man down. <laughs> Too tight to tame. We were building the thing, you know where you went over a bunch of palmetto roots through the whole section there? 
kept, every time we kept going through there after we built it, we kept getting stung. What the hell? What the hell? Every time, one sting. So we stopped. We're going to say, okay, let's find this this nest. There's a wasp nest, mud dopper thing up in this tree. So we knock it down. It's gone, but there's still a little piece on the end of the thing. And you see the mud daubers got back on it and trying to start it again. So I tell him, hit it again <laughs> with the stick. Of course, he listens to me, dumbass. I'm standing back up from here to that tree. Hits it and the wasp comes and lands right here on him and stings him right there in his nose. I just see him turn around like this with this wasp <laughs> in the air like that. Stings him, he starts screaming. Within 30 seconds, his face swole up. You ever see the movie uh, Werewolf in London? You know how the whole face comes out like that? That's exactly what he looked like. His cheeks were as far out as his nose. I thought he was gonna die. <laughs> I got stung right there. That cartilage doesn't expand. It doesn't swell. But the whole rest of your face goes up like a balloon. So you got this little nose all sunk in. So we're running through. along this road here to get back to the cars we're parked over there. And the snot is just <laughs> pouring out of his face. It, <laughs> you can just see it like this alien ooze coming out of his face. That's his. <laughs> <laughs> That's my claim to fame. Ooh, got a little black diamond section here. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 oh, that was the biggest roots I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, we figured nothing else would done much in life will last, but this seems to have really Yeah. Awesome. That's good. We'll be gone someday and we'll still be here someday. Oh, I got stuck. <laughs> my foot actually got pulled and it stopped my momentum on my bike. <laughs> this thing. Yo, West Palm Beach lasso. <laughs> That's actually probably my fault. I was supposed to have trimmed out that one. Ah, that was on your to-do list. Yeah. That's what every trail system needs more of. Features, wood features, skinnies. Little stuff like that that is hours of entertainment. If you build it the right way, make it challenging, people just hang out and try to try to beat the, the challenge. That's what makes uh, doing the Patreon rides at Santos so fun. Santos is just fun features that you go back and forth and, okay, see if I can do it. Okay, see if he can do it. Challenge each other. It makes it so much of a mountain bike playground. It's awesome. <laughs> John said this stuff's been around for more than 20 years and it changes with every hurricane that comes through. <laughs> Something falls over, they gotta cut around it or make it different. Nice little ride at Mount Trashmore. Ooh, flamingo. <laughs> Holy crap, we just had one of the best post-ride meals ever at El Fogoncito. If you go on a Monday, you can get four chicken enchiladas with green sauce for $7.99 and it includes a soft drink. This place was so good. That is such a perfect post-ride meal. Not far from Dyer. It's a, it's a little bit down the road, but oh, mwah. We also went down to the old Jupiter Inlet and checked out the ocean. Oh my God, it's so blue, it's so clear, but the, the waves were hitting hard. We saw a couple fishermen, didn't see if they caught anything, but uh, such a cool little spot. Check it out, I actually have my glasses, I found them. I, they were buried deep. Usually I don't lose glasses, I usually wear them out. So I'm out of breath right now because it's 6.10 p.m. and this park closes at 6.45 and I had to cross this big old <laughs> wooden bridge thing to get to the beach and see it. I got to dip my toes in the Atlantic. I don't know if I've ever done that before. I've seen the Atlantic Ocean before, but I don't know if I've ever really dipped the toes in. That water was decently warm compared to Northern California water where you need a big old wetsuit to go in. So definitely swimmable. Big, big thank you to John and Peter for showing me around Dyer. So many cool stories. I love hearing the behind the scenes things with the trail builders, with the people who are actually taking action and making our mountain bike trails possible. 
there are many, many more Florida adventures to come. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you on the trail.